Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. Oh yes, folks, it is time to continue the story of Terry Coleman and her all-evil party. The original Baldur's Gate 2 was released in 2000, developed by Bioware and published by Black Isle Studios, a division of Interplay Entertainment. The Enhanced Edition was released in 2013, developed by Overhaul Games and published by Atari. Baldur's Gate 2 The Shadows of Arm is a role-playing game, and the sequel to Baldur's Gate, following shortly after the events of the first game, where you slew Zeravok, the leader of the Iron Throne, and a Baal Spawn. We discovered that we are also a Baal Spawn, a child of the former god of murder Baal. But what connection does that have to this game? More than you'd think. Baldur's Gate 2 The Shadows of Arm is a game that is very near and dear to my heart, but not one that I'm going to pretend I'm any good at. When I heard this game was coming out all those years ago, I was really excited because I loved Baldur's Gate. I still love Baldur's Gate, and I really wanted it. The game was pre-ordered for me by my parents, and it came with a little bonus disc that had a few extra things on it, including an extra merchant that sold a few things from the Icewind Dale games, and that was a really neat bonus because I liked the Icewind Dale games as well. This playthrough is going to be following on from the Let's Play of Baldur's Gate 1, the Enhanced Edition, and we're going to be bringing in the same main character. Terry Coleman the Fighter. If you want to know how the game plays, or what happened in that playthrough, it's best that you watch that if you haven't already. It's quite long, but Baldur's Gate is a fun game, and I'd recommend you checking it out. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, creating our character, and creating is in air quotes because our character has already been mostly created. There are various options here, including going back, we don't want to go back, we're going to select a single player. We're going to import our game. We're going to find our save from Baldur's Gate 1. The final save, I believe it is going to be called Final Save. And there are so many memories attached to all of these images, including there. The merchant there, where you can buy various things. Business has been poor, what with the iron shortage and all. There is a, a final save that I did very recently. There is another save that is, uh, further down, I think. One that, uh, is in the middle of combat. There is also that save that I could use. And I'm going to use this save, I think. We're going to highlight it, we're going to load. Here you can import the custom-made characters from the save you've selected. If you are entering a multiplayer game, the session host can restrict the ability scores, experience, or items on any important characters. That's not going to necessarily be a problem, the items part, that is. So we're going to select Done, and here is Terry Coleman, a lawful evil human fighter with all of these enhanced stats from all of the stat books that we found during play. Strength 19, Dexterity 19, Constitution 19, Intelligence 11, Wisdom 12, Charisma 10, Two-Handed Swords 4, and two-handed weapon style too. Suffice to say, Terry Coleman used a two-handed sword and dealt a lot of damage with it. We can uh, change her appearance if we want to. We're not going to, we're going to keep Terry Coleman looking exactly as she was in the first game. As for voice, that's going to be a little bit more difficult because the voices have changed compared to the first game. Let's see what we have, shall we? You will fall by my hand. Not quite similar to the uh, voice we had in Baldur's Gate 1 Enhanced Edition. Yeah! I doubt that's going to be either. The obvious choice. No, no, that is not the obvious choice. We'll try a uh, female 2 voice. <laughs> that might actually work. Everyone will benefit under my leadership. It's probably the most similar to the uh, voice we had in the first game so far. You're not so tough. That one is not. <laughs> now that I'm in charge, we'll be sure to have some fun. You remind me of Sparkle from Stonekeep. You know what? You might actually be the voice actor for Sparkle from Stonekeep. We're not having Sparkle from Stonekeep in this game. You will fall by my hand. That is also uh, a tempting one. Of course. I'm the best choice. We're going to go with this voice. <laughs> I think it is the most appropriate. 
Done. Name. We're going to leave the name as it is. And we're going to accept. If we create the party, we go into the sort of pseudo multiplayer mode, where we can make multiple party members and take them on the adventure. But we're going to be having uh, the NPCs that have already been made as our companions. And we're going to try our best to get an all evil party. That's going to be a little difficult though, because there are far less evil characters in Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, compared to Baldur's Gate 1. In fact, before the Enhanced Edition, it was actually impossible to get an all evil party in Shadows of Arm. Throne of Baal allowed you to do it, but there wasn't a thief available. This has been changed in the Enhanced Edition. Let us accept. And before we go into the game itself, we have to pick our difficulty. Now, the core rules, I believe, is what the original game ran with. This setting is aimed at veteran players who are well versed in AD&D mechanics. Enemies deal full damage, party members can permanently die, and spells aren't guaranteed to be copied to spellbooks, which is uh, how it was in the original Baldur's Gate 2. It does default to normal, however. Enemies deal 25% less damage, party members cannot permanently die, hit point rolls are maximized, now that is an important uh, thing, because the game can be really stingy with hit points. You gained a level? How much did you get? One. And then you gained one hit point. But I'm gonna stick with the core rules here, because I think the core rules are what um, I'm more used to. It's going to be a bit more difficult, but that is what I'm going to stick with. And so, when we come back folks, we're going to go straight into the game, and see just what trouble Terry Coleman is in. From the intro cutscene, we are in a lot of trouble. Hopefully we can get out of it, and hopefully all of our good equipment will serve us well. Spoiler alert, our equipment is not going to serve us well. And so, I'll catch you next time folks, and I'll see you then. Later.